The relational model. The relational model was proposed by Codd in 1870. It was a pioneering work then, and is still a dominant model, used by most of the major database server software today. The relational model provides a logical representation of the data, based on the mathematical notion of relations. In the sequel, we will avoid mathematical notation, and we will describe the relational model in simple terms. In the relational model, data are represented by relations. A relation is a table with named columns, and rows. A relation corresponds to an entity set, or collection of entities. An entity is a person, place, event, or thing about which data is collected. A row of the table is called a tuple and corresponds to an entity instance, i.e., a member of the entity set. Tuples are what we usually call records. A named column of a relation is an attribute. It corresponds to a characteristic of an entity. Attributes are also called fields. The contents of the table cells are the values of the corresponding attributes of the entity. The set of the allowable values for one or more attributes is the domain of that attribute. A relational database is a collection of relations with distinct relation names, possibly linked together. For example, a database with relations for employees and for departments may contain information in what department each employee works, therefore linking these two relations. Please note that a relation is not a relationship, but an entity set. We will discuss relationships between entity sets, and how they are represented, later on. An attribute or a set of attributes that determines all other attributes is called a key. A key might be a single attribute, or a set of multiple attributes, in which case it is called a composite key. A key uniquely determines the tuple, therefore a relation cannot have more than one tuple with the same key. Keys cannot contain a null value. Please note that if you add more attributes in a key the result is also a key, as the combination uniquely determines the tuple. However, when we talk about keys we mean minimal such sets of attributes. That means that any proper subset of them is not a key. A relation may have more than one keys. One of them is selected as the primary means of identifying a tuple, and is called a primary key. All other keys, which are not selected as primary, are called alternate keys. An attribute or set of attributes, within one relation, that matches a key, usually the primary one, of some other relation is called a foreign key. For example, the attribute for department number within a tuple for an employee is the primary key for identifying the department in the department's relation. A simple relation for products may contain three attributes for the product identification number, the product description and its price. The product identification serves as a primary key, and there are no alternate keys. Please note that the use of unique identification numbers or identification codes is a simple and easy way to establish a primary key in a relation. The domain of the product identification attribute is all eight-digit numbers. The domain of the price attribute is the set of all monetary values within the range of prices that the enterprise uses for its products. Another relation for employees may have six attributes, for identification number, first name, last name, position within the enterprise, annual salary, and the department the employee works in. The identification number is the primary key, because it was selected as such, mainly for simplicity reasons. If we assume that no two employees have the same name combination, then the set of first name and last name is an alternate key, which is composite. The domain of the position attribute is the set of all possible positions within the enterprise at hand. The department identification code is a foreign key to the relations for the departments. I.e., the department's relation has an attribute for the department identification code which is a key in that relation. Please note that the two relations are part of a simple relational database. The operations on a relational database are defined by relational algebra. However, we are going to discuss these operations without diving into the relation algebra and mathematical notation. The most important operations are select, project and join. Other less frequently used operations are union, intersection, difference, and product. The select operation yields as result a subset of the tuples based on a specified criterion. For example selecting the employees having annual salary less than 20 thousands produces three tuples out of the initial six. 
the project operation yields as result only the columns of the specified attributes. For example projecting only first name, last name, and position, produces all employees but only with the three specified attributes. The join operation combines information from two or more tables based on specified criteria. It is one of the most useful relational operations in order to retrieve from the database the information we are interested in. For example to get the name of the department and the building each employee works in, we have to combine information from the two relations for the employees and the departments, in such a way that each employee tuple is combined with the department tuple that has the same value in the department identification code attribute. More complex joins may combine information using more complex criteria. There are many types of join operations. The natural join combines relations by selecting rows with common values and common attributes. The previous example is a natural join since it used common values and the common attribute for the department identification code. The common attributes appear only once in the result, thus the natural join eliminates duplicate attributes. Also rows that cannot be matched do not appear in the result. The equi join operation combines relations based on a quality condition that compares specified attributes of the relations, not necessarily common attributes. In contrast to the natural join it does not eliminate the duplicate attributes. Obviously, the equality criteria must be explicitly defined. The theta join operation combines relations based on criteria on specified attributes of each relation using criteria other than the equality one. The outer join includes also unmatched tuples from the participating relations, combining them with null values in the attributes of the other relation. The left outer join combines unmatched tuples with null values only from the left relation. Unmatched tuples from the right relation do not appear in the result. Similarly, the right outer join combines unmatched tuples with null values only from the right relation, while unmatched tuples from the left relation do not appear in the result. from the other less frequently used operations. The union operation combines all tuples from two or more relations. That means that a tuple that appears in either relation also appears in the result. The relations have to be compatible. That is they must have the same number of attributes, with the same domains for corresponding attributes. In order for the union to make sense, in most cases the relations have exactly the same attributes. The intersect operation yields as result the tuples rows that appear in both relations. That means the tuples that are common in the intersecting relations. As in the previous case, the relations have to be compatible for this operation. The difference operation yields as result the tuples from the first relation that are not found in the second relation. Again, the relations have to be compatible for this operation. The product operation yields as result all possible pairs from two relations. That means that the result has as attributes all the attributes of the first relation and all the attributes of the second relations, with same attributes in the two relations not combined together, but forming different attributes in the result. A join operation may be considered as a combination of other operations. More specifically a join operation is equivalent to a product operation that creates all possible combinations of tuples from the two relations, followed by a select operation that uses the join criteria to select only the appropriate tuples, followed by a project operation that eliminates duplicate attributes. However, that does not mean that the database management systems implements joins using these three operations. Usually, database management systems use other faster techniques, that avoid the intermediate product which is expected to be very big, and take too much time and effort to produce. One useful concept of the relational model is views. Views are defined upon base relations, which are the normal relations, discussed so far, whose tuples are physically stored in database. Views are the dynamic results of one or more relational operations, operating on base relations to produce another relation. A view is a virtual relation that does not necessarily actually exist in the database, but is produced upon request, at the time of request. The contents of a view are defined as a query, that is an operation or a combination of operations, on one or more base relations. Views are dynamic, meaning that changes made to base relations that affect view attributes are immediately reflected in the view. The purpose of views is multiple. They providing a powerful and flexible security mechanism by hiding parts of database from certain users. They also permit users to access data in a customized way, 
so that same data can be seen by different users in different ways, at the same time. Finally they can simplify complex operations on base relations. A view can be defined by an expert and then users may use the view as if it was a normal relation to make simpler queries. However, there is a major problem with views. Although updates to the base relation are automatically reflected in all views that reference that base relation, the reverse is not easy, and sometimes it is not even possible. Views can be based on quite complex queries, and there is no easy way to define how changes in views can be reflected back to their base relations. There are restrictions that define when such an update is possible. Such a case is if a view is based on a query that involves a single relation and contain a candidate key of that relation. That makes it possible to find the tuple in the base relation that corresponds in the tuple of the view, and propagate the changes. In other cases, updating the base relations is not possible and therefore updating the view is not allowed.